Hello there adventurers and welcome to Wally DM. Today we're going to take a look at fun ways that you could use zombies in your game. Now this is a tradition started by Dungeon Class that we're kind of carrying over into our DM roundtable. So we're going to take a look at funny, silly, or just weird and unorthodox ways that you could use a zombie or zombies in your game. And to start us off, we've got Denny. What do you have for us? All right, so I don't imagine we have to go too much into what a zombie is, right? They're the undead uh, humans or humanoids that have perished and have been reanimated. So what's, what I've created, I, I haven't gone too fancy here. I've just kind of got the, the concept of a, a combat encounter. So follow me here. You're, you're a party of adventurers, and you walk into a room in this dungeon, and it's filled with a heavy fog. There is somewhere in the fog this pulsing purple light and uh you hear odd groans coming from the ceiling somewhere up there and occasionally that crystal on the other side of the room gives a big pulse and so what happens is thuds begin to hit the floor around the party and possibly even land on top of the players what this crystal is doing in this room there are some zombies that are walking around on the roof and this crystal specifically alters the gravity of undead in the room. So players are going to be <laughs> fighting zombies blind. And every once in a while, this crystal will go off maybe on initiative 20 or uh, yeah, initiative 20. And the zombies will zip right back up to the ceiling, shamble about, shift positions, and next round fall back down. <laughs> Hilarious. Let the zombies hit the floor. Let the zombies hit the floor. Oh, Let the terrible. zombies hit the floor. <laughs> I I saw an interesting idea. Somebody had put uh, gunpowder, like loaded a zombie up with gunpowder. Maybe if like one of these zombies hit the floor, a specific zombie, maybe there's like an explosion or something. I don't know. You could do some wacky stuff. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Wow, the the crystal gravity zombies. That's yeah, that's that's going into a future game. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Fred? What do we have for fun, silly zombie stories? All right. So, what's my take on zombies? So, my take on zombies, uh, other than exploding zombies, which I think is a very good idea. I think a zombie should definitely explode because if um, if the players can't make them explode, why would you not want to make them explode to yourself, yourself as a dungeon master? There's all sorts of carnage that can take place there's all sorts of things that could get in your mouth and your eyes too now i actually um i went with a i was actually thinking fey red wizard my zombie butler who li lives uh, um lives in my mansion who looks after my mansion does the dusting cleans the dishes prepare prepares the meal probably not a good idea because god knows what would fall into the dish that they prepare something is going to drop off it's like you don't usually ask a leper to make your, your meal for you. It's not a good idea. So don't ask the zombie to do meal preparation. But everything else is fine. If a piece drops off, they can clean it up because that's their job. So that was my first idea. And then I was really desperate. I could not think of anything else. I was like, oh, zombies should in, impart some sort of disease. Because like, you know, in, in movies, they always seem to impart some sort of disease. You become a zombie. I mean, they couldn't, you don't have to make it turn into a zombie or you just give it some sort of disease, any disease, pick a, pick a disease. There's plenty of them. Just pick one. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I went back in time to the Munsters. And for those of you who don't know, that is a TV series. The Munsters was basically a sitcom about a family of monsters. One was Frankenstein. One was a vamp, well, two vampires, friend grandpa was a vampire mum was a vampire and then we had um i believe actually was it the um werewolf was the boy and the girl i don't know what what was what was she who knows i think maybe a vampire as well there was a lot of vampires going on but i was thinking let's take that and go zombie because i feel like if you were to go and explore a location and find that there's a complete family functioning quite normally but they're all zombies that would be quite interesting. There's a lot of fun you could have with that. It might not be a combat because it's kind of a bit pointless. What would you mm -hmm. do? You're going to butcher a, a child zombie? 
you sick mother, you. No, you won't do that sort of thing. No, but you would have a chat with them. You try to sort out their problems, take out their garbage, that sort of stuff. Super interesting, <laughs> exciting stuff that you would do in a Dungeons and Dragons adventure. Maybe you'd offer to, um, you know, weed the garden, um, possibly do the dishes, stay, stay for a meal. Just actually maybe not stay for the meal because God knows what's fallen into the food. That was my idea. Um, so sitcom zombie family, go and visit them, see how they're doing. I dig it. And I think they should cast that zombie movie in black and white just because. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> what about you, Ryan? What do you have for us? So uh, I always like, you know, turning the the moral dilemma up to 11 whenever I have an opportunity. Just because nice. I love that that gray area where everybody's just scratching their heads, wondering what the heck to do to get out of this situation. So... The clear thing to me was if we're going to turn zombies on their head, you do the quintessential, okay, there's a necromancer or some other nefarious thing that is inside this tomb mm -hmm. where a long line of, you know, paladin kings have been interred, you know, okay, that's fine. And now the necromancer is turning them all into zombies. Okay, well, now you get a call from the hierophant of the church and he's like, hey, look, we need you to deal with this problem. But don't touch the zombies. You have to turn them exactly as they are back to re-dead, not undead. Don't touch them. If you disturb the corpses, it's blasphemy. And we'll know about it if you do. Wow. So now all of a sudden it goes from a normal zombie hack and slash encounter to a do not touch them, super sneaky, almost like a reverse heist because you have to get in without getting detected and then hope that you can deal with whatever MacGuffin problem is inside the tomb, you know, deal with the necromancer, replace the gemstone, you know, whatever, whatever, uh, you know, whatchamacallit you put on the whatchamacallit to, to make the zombie thing stop. But that process, <laughs> it, it becomes, you know, you have to seal team six your way through a, a mausoleum in order to get it done. So. Well, first round, everybody makes herself roll except for the paladin. <laughs> Okay, so for my idea, the adventurers are going to be called upon to do a little bit of detective work at a local art gallery. Apparently, the owner of the art gallery has been doing very well selling some paintings. But also in the same vein, there have been some missing persons in the city. And those missing persons, after the characters do a little bit of research and recon, will find out that a lot of them disappeared, were last seen at this art gallery. So have our characters go there. They'll meet the owner who seems nice enough and is just bankrolling it in and perhaps even shows a few of these masterpieces that this unknown artist is bringing to the gallery to be sold. And it's at that point I would probably have our characters maybe look at the paintings a little bit closer and they see what looks like, is that dried blood on that painting? It looks like dried blood and then perhaps they need to get over the the ropes that keep everybody out to maybe get a closer look at it things like that but all in all what's actually going on in this entire scenario is the owner has a zombie in the basement that used to be an artist when he was turned undead for some odd reason he kept those artistic abilities so when the characters find him they're going to find what's that thing that the artists hold with the paint on it and stuff uh, the palette yeah they'll, they'll have that <laughs> the the zombie will have that will have a smock on it'll have like this uh canvas on an easel and things and it'll just be sitting there painting but the thing that sells it that's the masterpiece is because the zombie gets hungry and you know being artistic and creative it you know you get hungry doing that so you got to have something to eat so the owner will bring someone down for the zombie to eat and not only does it eat whatever victim that's there it will also do so in a way so it gets that splatter across the canvas for this perfect artistic oh man yeah that's that's kind of where i went so zombie artist in the basement that's making paintings out of the blood of its victims i i do have a question um which i think is the selling point for your idea wally oh, and that good, is good good does the zombie have a bob ross afro yes <laughs> Gosh, because if it doesn't, miss, I think really you have missed the point completely. <laughs> Are they happy little blood spatters? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what you're going to, you know. 
happy little accidents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the one we want to go with. So the Afro is an absolute must. Yes. Even if it's, even if it's like a wig, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Zombies don't have hair really, or do they? I don't know. I've never I've never met one myself. Um that that was just something yeah. I yeah. thought you need to consider. Absolutely. And shame on me for not including Bob Ross Afro zombie as part of that description because that is absolutely brilliant. And I'm gonna use that. <laughs> well, and download it on Drive Through RPG, everybody, from Wall ID. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next Bye. October, Happy Little Accidents, the adventure for levels oh one through four. <laughs> oh my uh, goodness. Also, Wally, we, sh we should combine ideas here because I'm sure if you have a canvas on the ground and drop a zombie on it, you can get some artistic results there too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so those are some weird but fun and silly ways that you could use zombies in your game, especially if you got a Halloween adventure coming up. Maybe you throw a few of these and just catch your players totally off guard. Maybe they're coming to the table expecting this serious and scary Halloween adventure. And at the very end, you've got Bob Ross zombie just painting happy little victims on his canvas. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate uh, my guests and co-hosts here for this. Let us know what you would do that is fun and silly with a zombie in the comments below, and we'll catch you in the next video. On to the next.